Shalawo, Yashra Allah. We're going to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Raha Kadash, Hello Hebrew tongues, Craig Names of the Heavy Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawan to you, sister, brothers, even this truth, and Shalawan to the brothers and sisters listening and studying, show themselves approved. Shalawan. Woo, there's so much going on, y'all, Sharala, so much going on. But I'm going to pick a topic and talk about it. And today we're going to talk about is this manufactured and controlled famine that's about to pop up in Babylon the Great. And it's not just no, this is just an ordinary famine just out of nowhere, like just food just going out of style, evaporate. No, this is a controlled famine being orchestrated by Yahweh Bashim Shah using the wicked, which is Esau, Edom. This is going to be a controlled type of thing. The food, what I noticed what they're doing is they're getting rid of the excess food because the land, you can live off the land. The land is plentiful. The land makes, you know, you can grow apples, oranges, you know, the land will feed you. Esau doesn't want that because Esau has a goal in mind. Esau wants to put a device in your body. He cannot force you to do that if you have other means of taking care of yourself. So Esau is getting rid of those alternative means. And he's getting rid of all the excess food to create a systematic famine so that he can funnel you into taking something that you don't want to take in order to feed yourself. He's going to try to starve you out if you don't take this device and, and bow down to him. And that's how this famine has been orchestrated. And I'm going to show you because these, these devils, man, they do a uh, cloud seeding. So they're, they're creating droughts. Where people can't grow the crops, they can't feed their livestock or their, their animals, which the meat that we eat, that's been, you know, compromised. They're destroying food processing plants to, to make the famine, you know, more to speed it up. They just we just got ready to, uh got out of the, the crown Vicky and everything is changing. Everything's changing hands, food is becoming shorter and shorter in supply. And what's left, they're going to ration it out, but only ration out to certain people that have bowed down to the beast. So I got an article right here talking about beef can get as high as $50 a pound. Man, that's going to make the people ride right there. $50 a pound. So you mean to tell me two pounds of beef going to cost $100? That's, that's ridiculous, man. So they're just trying to make it to where, you know, they're going to make people's, they're going to exhaust your funds. They're going to make it where you can't, Pay for your lifestyle. You got to decide pay rent or pay for food. And that's going to make the people rebel. And they know the people are going to rebel. So they they looking to create martial law. They're creating instability in their own system in order to get a new system in place that the people are run to. Because like say, if you try to pay cash for, for the beef, for the money, you know, for, for the food, you got to pay $50. They'd be like, okay, we got this new thing. This new thing, all you got to do is, you know, let, let it go in your body and you can get it for the old prices. And if people don't know about Revelation 13 and 16, they're going to go for that and not even know. They just bow down to this devil. They're, they're not going to care. As long as they get their old lifestyle back, they're going to do it. And that's this devil. He's squeezing. You know, he's getting the right to squeeze because you have a shots giving that right because we're going through a trial, a test, a temptation. And you have a shots going to see. Who really got that faith? You could say you got the faith, but I'm going to put you in the test. I'm going to put you in the, in the fire of adversity and let this devil take away your goods. And we're going to see how much faith do you really have. So that's the test that we about to come, come up on. So I'm about to read this article because I didn't know Oklahoma like was a, a big time beef producer of meat. You know, I, this is my hometown state. I didn't know we was, I thought maybe Texas or Kansas, they said Oklahoma is the number one cattle producer in Babylon the Great. So check it out, we're going to read the article. And it says, I don't know about you, but my average grocery bill has just about doubled in the last year. Straight up, it has, con. I'm not eating more of or higher priced meals. It's just a normal response to inflation. As fuel rises, the price of everything else does the same. But inflation isn't what Oklahoma ranchers fear for the future of their industry. It's the drought. See, it's a drought, man. You can't get the hay. You can't feed your cows. So check it out. It says the whole state of Oklahoma is currently classified in a state of drought. 
Some areas are considered abnormally dry, while others are listed as experiencing extreme drought status. But that's not painting the full picture that is happening across the entire beef industry right now. During periods of past drought, it hasn't historically been a widespread occurrence. It's usually one region or another suffering dry conditions, and the other regions have been able to support those in need. It says, for example, during Oklahoma's last deep drought about a decade ago, the dry conditions were mostly limited to parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, the heartland as people tend to call it. Producers out east, west, and north were able to produce the hay and feed products to keep our beef industry chuking at a premium price. That's not the case during this drought. This drought is a current limit to Oklahoma and a handful of the states. It's almost the entire western half of the country, and the pain we're feeling now in the store is nothing compared to what ranchers are warning us of. See that? You might as well say the whole south and the west coast are in a, a big-time drought, and you need hay in order to feed your cows, the beef. You need to grow corn to feed your chickens. Um, they, they got the pigs eating the, the corn. So if you can't grow the vegetation in order to feed your livestock, that's going to create, you know, higher prices. The inflation, like, they're going to pass that on. They're not going to, the billionaires ain't going to take a hit on that. They're going to put that all the way to the consumers, to the people buying it. So check it out. It says, at the present moment, a bell of hay costs roughly twice as much as it did during last year's rain, adequate growing season. The same could be said for feed, thanks to the high fuel costs for transport. Can you see where this is going yet? <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> you got to pay more for food. And it's going to be less of. So check it out. It says, if it costs 200 to feed and raise a cow in 2021 to a market value of 600, imagine what the value will have to be when it's 2022's herd hit the same market, seeking the same profit margin. If it costs 400 to feed and raise that same cow, It'll need to fetch a finished price in a fair comparison because each farm and ranch in America is a small business that must profit to survive or cease to exist. Bam. And right there. That's what the, the Edomites are looking to do away with. They don't want small businesses to thrive. This whole Crown Vicky scenario was to crush small businesses, mom and pops, you know, people own a business. They want everything corporate because corporate is controlled by the elites. So they're getting rid of the middleman is what Esau is doing right now. He's getting rid of the middleman because the elites want a new system in place, a B system. So once they get that system in place and everything is corporate, it can make them easily to consolidate all the food and, and to ration out whatever supplies is left. With a mom and pop, they don't operate off what the elites want. Those are your everyday working grinder people. They're going to do their own thing. They're going to go off script. And that's what Esau don't want because he wants this B system in place. He wants everybody in order. So he wants everything corporate. Corporate businesses got bailouts during the Crown Vicky scenario. Mom and Pops did not. They died. That was the whole point of the scenario was to crush private owned businesses. So I think that's enough of me reading that. And I'm about to go to the scriptures now. As you can see, I just wanted to pull that out, man. They talking about beef can hit $50 a pound. You know, off of inflation. And that's that's what the scenario, what they want. That's what they want. That way they control who gets food and who doesn't. They want to starve off. They want to kill off a lot of people. They want to create panic where everybody's fighting over the last little thing of chicken wings. Esau wants that. That way it'd be easier for him to come in with his National Guard, his army, his military, and pick off whoever's left. So let's go to our uh, the scriptures on that, on that note. Because there will be a famine. Because you have about your shot said there'll be a famine. And what I noticed, this this famine is a controlled famine. Like Esau is doing self-inflicted wounds because he has ulterior motive. Because he's trying to enact a system in order to keep the people enslaved to him. They're trying to create more control is what Esau even wants because he's losing control. So check it out. This is Luke 21 and 11. And the great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And famines and pestilences. We're dealing with viruses and famines right now. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. So key word in there, famines. And another key one is pestilences, which goes in diseases and viruses. 
We're dealing with that right now. And Esau is behind all of that. If you really peel back the curtain. <laughs> and then who's puppeteering these Edomites to do this wickedness? That shit, how about y'all shot doing that? You know, because like, go, well, check this out. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 7. And it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the Lord is bringing in this famine. How is he bringing in this famine? By using the evil people he created. Esau, Edom, your white nation. They're the wicked. Using them to create a famine, to create the scenario so he can test the faith of the believers. That's what's going on right now. That's the big picture of this thing, Yasharala. And like Most House said, he controls everything. Man's goings are the Lord. So he's using the wicked to create this famine so we can get the scenario of when the food is rationed out, you can see who got faith and who doesn't. And that also lines up, look, Isaiah 45, 7 also lines up when you go to Job 9 and 24. And it reads, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the face of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? If we can answer that question, the wicked is Esau, Edom, your Edomites, your so-called white people. They are the wicked. And who owns the world right now? Esau do. Through your elites. Through your small hatters, your 1948ers, they have all the resources of the whole planet. They control everything. They dictate everything. Now, they're losing control because they're losing their wisdom, but they still have that power. Right now, you have to go to them and their industries for everything you need because we're up under them curses. Everything we need, we got to go to these devils for. And see, now, because everybody's seeing the oppression of these devils and what they're doing, now Jake is weaning himself off the system. Jake is getting his own food supply, growing his own crops, which is our, you know, our number one job anyway, agriculture. Jake growing his own garden. Jake getting his own little uh, livestock food if they got land. And Jake is slowly but surely, especially the whole elect, going away from the system. So that's why these devils are in the uproar. They're like, hold up, man. You don't, you don't leave my plantation. You don't leave the plantation. This is like back in the day. When our ancestors was in, you know, hard bonded slave, you leave the plantation, they chase you down with dogs and chop your foot off. They don't want you to leave the plantation because without us, they don't have a system. The whole system is built off the back of our labor. And now we're like, man, this mug is too oppressive. We're getting back smart. We're going back to the old school ways. <laughs> and that the devil know, like, if we leave, because we the ones that do all the work anyway, he won't have a system. So now he has to move quickly. He has to take away food. He has to come with more, you know, using his media, the narratives, uh, throwing pessimists out there, scaring the people, trying to scare you. Like, don't leave my system. Without me, you ain't going to make it. That's what this devil wants you to think. But we all, like, the ones of us that got wisdom, like, shh, I'm winging myself off this, you know, because it's, it's oppressive. And plus, we know where it's going. You you got an ulterior motive. You want to stick something in me, you damn devil. So I'm about to go over here and make plans to, to live off the land and rough it. And we're going to lead the system. So this devil, he got to move quick because it's a whole movement. He even got Edomites leaving his system. So this devil, he, he, he see his end coming. So that's why prophecy is happening so quick now. It's not tearing because the devil see that the, the big pushback. People are, are leaving. They're, they're like, I'm not going to. The grinders are ceasing. They're like, I'm not about to do this no more. I'm about to go do this right here, put some seeds in the ground, and see what I can do. <laughs> they, they trying to make it without this devil. So he got to move quickly and he got to establish, you know, his system real quick. And he's going to do it by the number one thing, the comfort Babylonians get is by their food, which was the first form of money. How you know somebody was rich is how much livestock they had, how much food they had. You know, then once your civilization get established, then you come with a currency. But the first currency was always food. That's the first thing, man. You got to eat. That's the process of life as of living. When you're in these fleshly bodies, you got to eat. So this devil's looking to compromise the food in order to force you into a new system. And then I'm going to go get this because this is about to go into play. Right, before I go get that, let's go get another article before I go get that. Because like the article is going to back up what I said beautifully. 
Oh, and I'm going to pull this out too. Since I said the land is given to the hand of the wicked, that Job 9 and 24, check this out. It's going to further prove it. Uh, look at the uh, Bill Gates of hell. Look how much land he owns. Like, <laughs> this proving it. This dude got 242,000 acres of farmland, 25,000 transitional land, and 1,000 acres of recreational land. So in total, he got 268,000 984 acres of land. <laughs> and you know what he gonna do with it. He gonna make, cause he said he want everybody eating live meat. So he's buying up all the farmland so people, the regular people can't farm and, and make the meat, the real meat that we need. And you know, he gonna come with his GMO stuff. So look at this. I'm gonna make this bigger so y'all can see it. There we go. Look, you got land. Look, Washington, 16,000 acres, 4,000 acres in California, 9,000 Idaho. He just bought that. Had them people mad, too. He got 25,000 acres in Arizona, 20,000 in Nebraska. That's He got all the corn. That's where the cornfields is at. <laughs> this damn devil. He got 47,000 acres in Arkansas, 69,000 acres in Louisiana. You know that that's a lot of uh food, southern. That's where the uh Mississippi River come in at. He got sixteen thousand acres in Mississippi. He got eight thousand acres in Ohio. He got fourteen thousand acres in Florida. So he gonna do something with the oranges. That's where you get your oranges at. Florida oranges. So ain't no telling what the devil gonna pump in the oranges now. That said, shh, we we gotta get out of here, y'all. This devil done. He done damn near bought up all the uh the U.S. He damn near, You look at this. From, from the, the west coast to the east coast, this devil owns a lot of land. And see how smart he bought it where, you know, you got the stuff to grow at. It ain't in New York where the concrete and stuff is at. He he makes it in the south for stuff. And watch, he probably going to buy some land up in Oklahoma and Texas in a minute too. So this devil owns a lot of land. So that that, that backs that precept up Job 9 and 24 completely. The land is given to the hand of the wicked. This devil, he's number one. Uh, He owns the, the most farmland in the U.S., Number one uh, owner of farmland is, is Bill Gates, the goddamn Microsoft computer dude. And you ain't no telling what he's doing to the food, <laughs> you know. So I just wanted to show you that, that this this dude, he got over 200,000 acres of farmland. Look, all over the U.S. So that backs up Job 9 and 24, like right in your face. So I wanted to go get, what else I wanted to go get? I want to go get this. Right here. Because they trying to say this ain't going to no conspiracy theory. This ain't no conspiracy. Check it out. It says, recent fires at food processing plants across the United States have sparked several conspiracy theories. Ain't no theory about that. It's fact. <laughs> you know, we, we seen the news reported that someone is setting them intentionally in order to hasten the food shortage. You are. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on. Now they mad. Because the people are figuring it out because they thought the people just so stupid, so dumb. Now, Babylonians, they are dumb, but come on, man. This, this is easy to figure out. You got over, what, what was they saying to say? 18 food processing plants burned down, and not just burned down, burned down to the ground, destroyed. These things got sprinkler systems installed. Get out of here. What'd you do? Turn them off? They didn't work all of a sudden? Then it's like a fire truck can get to a residential area quickly. So you're going to wait till it burns to the ground. Then you bring in the fire truck to put the fire out. Man, they, they are orchestrating this famine, y'all, Sharala. And they mad that people figuring it out. And they go, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Don't you be talking about that. Burn down. It just, it just, it just happened. It's a coincidence, all right? Man, man, get out of here with that, man. That's an Esau. They, they should have moved a little bit quicker, man, because this, this is stupid. The, the people ain't that dumb. So check it out. It says... None of the other scams work, so now they're attempting to starve us. And that's true. Read an April 21st Facebook post. It shared a screenshot of a tweet that notes an odd coincidence that 18 U.S. food processing plants facilities burnt down the last six months. The post was flagged as part of Facebook's efforts to combat, combat false news and misinformation on the news feed. And that ain't misinformation. That's information coming to that mad that people are sharing information on social media and they're connecting the dots. So the elites don't like that because their plans are getting foiled. People are looking like, okay, you burning down food processing plants. 
I'm about to grow me something out my backyard. I'm gonna be, let me grow something. So people are getting smarter and their plan's not going to work because people are figuring out the wickedness that they're doing. That's why it's going to be a big pushback. The last lesson did a big push. It's going to be some pushback on these people. And they mad. That's how they create all the social media gathers information. It's like a two-edged sword. Now it's getting used against you because it's being used as an alternative news site and people are talking amongst each other. Like somebody in Texas can talk to somebody in New York like, man, a, a food process plant burnt down here in Texas. Then somebody in New York like, one burnt down here in New York. Then somebody from Indiana be like, one burnt down down here. And everybody's talking to each other. You connected everybody through the web. You damn devil. <laughs> so and they taking down the post. So they trying to stop this information from going out. Calling it a uh, conspiracy theory misinformation. They're stepping it up. They're spending more money to combat us from talking to each other. They going to get rid of the YouTube in a minute too. So just, just wait. It's going to happen. And check it out. It says, it's not clear what anyone would have gained by starving Americans, though at least one post suggests that Bill Gates would. <laughs> you, you damn skippy he would. But the conspiracy theory is spreading like on wildfire on social media and conservative websites. Fox News host Tucker Carlson added fuel by noting two other recent fires and asking the April 22nd segment, what is going on here exactly? So that dude has a, a lot of you know, your, your right-wing conservative Edomites, they watch Tucker Carson. And he's even saying something on the news segment. That's that's a part of so That's mainstream media that's putting it out there right now. And they're saying, like, who, who would profit off of starving out Americans? E the elites will. We're going into a global reset. They've told you that in the World Economic Forum, we're going into a global reset. So to force you into a global reset, I have to take away the food first. You can't have plenty out here in abundance. And I say, hey, man, go get this device in your body or else, you know, no food. And then there's plenty of food out here. People are like, man, I ain't listen to that and eat their little nachos. I munch on their little hamburger, you know. But if you take all the food away and food is scarce or really expensive and you be like, you better take this device or else, you know, then people, then they're going they to do it. Especially a fat person they can't control their gut, ain't used to, you know, fasting or nothing like that. They're going to run right to it. Like, shit, I got to feed, I got to eat. They're going to think real corner. I got to eat out here in these streets. I got to do it, man. Hurt my arm, hurt my head. Whatever you got to do, man. As long as I can eat my little hamburgers, I'm good. So they're creating this fame. It's manufactured. It's being orchestrated all through Yahweh Bashim Shah through the wicked Esau even the elites. Because they have an agenda they got to get off the ground. And the people... Are waking up to that. That's why this is going to spark a civil war. It's going to be a war. Because <laughs> people don't woke up to what they doing. It's not a secret. <laughs> you know. Hey the prophets. The heavens has revealed his iniquity. <laughs> the devil he's exposed. He's trying to do a, a diabolical plan. With everybody knowing about it. So they're going to have to go in by force. It's not going to be. I trick you into going into it. I'm going to finesse you into it. It's going to be by force. You got to put a gun to these people's head. You got to take away. They got to be starving. And then, you know, you be like, man, I got a box of rations for you. All you got to do is take it, man. And, you know, feed your family. Be that man. Be that breadwinner, man. Just do it. And all will be good. That's what they want people at that point. You know? And I'm about to pull this out. And I'm about to pull this out. I just want to pull that, man. That all that went beautifully with what I wanted to show right there. So, Jay, I'm going to go to second address. Second address, 6 and 22. And it reads, And suddenly shall the sowing places appear unsowing. The full storehouses shall steadily be found empty. So this devil going to start pulling stuff off the back. They're going to say, oh, it's infected with salmonella. It's infected with listeria, recall. They, gonna, they got farmers already destroying their, their cattle, destroying their crops. They're already doing it. So they're taking food off the table. They're taking food from these storehouses. They're going to make it where they're not delivering big shipments to these supermarkets. And they're going to create this famine. And they're going to use the military to deliver rations. It's going to be like uh, food drives. But yet, you can't get anything unless, you know, right by that food drive, they're going to have a, a station. And you're going to sit in that booth. And you're going to have to, you know, take this device. Once you let, let me tag you. And then I'll give you some food. They're going to ration out the food. That's how this devil going to do. Now, before you do that, you got to do what? You got to get rid of the excess that's out here already. The food that's out on the market, you got to start pulling that back. They're already doing that now. Start making it expensive. 
start putting his, not as much out there, and they're going to funnel it. And then when it's really, really bad, because it's going to start insurrections, man. People going to be yapping for food because Americans like to eat. This is the most obese nation in the world. So it's going to be a lot of fighting. That, that, that'll start martial law right there. And that's what them devils want. Because then they can bring in the National Guard, the Army, do food drives, you know, ration out the food to the people. But yeah, it's going to come with a condition. It's going to come with a certain condition. And you bet not take that condition, y'all, Sharala. So that's why we're making these video pistols and warning you of what this devil's about to do. So you can make preparations and, and set yourself up for victory. And the best way to set yourself up for victory is not by doomsday prepping or, oh, I, I got the green thumb, my guard and all that. Now, you can do that, but that's really not going to save you. What's going to save you is a divine intervention from your high Bashi was shot. So check this out. Let's go get this. Let's go get Job. I'm going to probably end off with that. Job 5 and 22. Because you are already in the best place it is to be. And that's in this truth of your high Bashi was shot. This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of him. This is the best way to beat this devil and offset him. Because really, when you found the house of David and you got this truth, you already beat him. Because you got the truth. Now our job is to retain the truth. Hold on to it. So he's, this scenario right here is to shake our faith. Try our faith. You know, like, uh, I know your stomach growling. You know, just go ahead and let me punch this in you. And I give you this nice juicy hamburger. They're probably going to dangle the food in your face and everything. So we're going to be built up real strong. And, and it be locked in our faith to resist this devil. And like I say, like you might have some supplies put back. You might get ran out your house, thrown in a FEMA camp, detention center, or say you might have some supplies, man. Esau might rage and stuff, take it. You know, whatever scenario, the army might come in like they just raided <laughs> Donald Trump, raid, come in, do raids, food raids. You ain't got no, no, uh, according to Penal Code 3002, you don't have no license to grow that food. And they just take your crop, take your food, your noodles you got put back, take your water. You know, bring up some type of cold new law where you can't have supplies and the devil might take your stuff. And then what? You know, so we, we not going to rely on our doomsday prepping skills, you know, but you, you're not wrong for putting nothing back. You know, this is a way to try to beat it. But the best way to beat this, like I said earlier, is through the spirit of your how about me? I was shy being locked in with this truth. Because check out what Job 5 and 22 got to say. It said, at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shall be afraid of the beasts of the earth. So it said, at the destruction and famine, we shall laugh. You know what that means right there? That means that standard got lifted. That means we got spiritual power. Because you got spiritual power, psh, hey, you ain't worried about nothing these devils got going. You're going to go right to that military base, run through them troops, tear their butts up, and take what they got. When you got that spiritual power, you're going to laugh at what this devil doing. You know, you're going to be eating. You know, with that spiritual power, whatever people you have a shot gift you with that's up under you, you're going to get the food to them. They're going to be able to eat. You know what I'm saying? That might be your way of eating. You know, it might be, you might be around a man that got spiritual power. And he, he feeding the whole little group he with. He might be taking care of, he might have a whole community set up. You might have two brothers guarding it. One brother go out and savage for food. So that's what we should be looking for. That's what I'm looking forward to. That spiritual power being lifted. That standard being lifted. Because when that standard gets lifted, that Job 5 and 22, that goes into play. We're going to laugh at the destruction and the famine. Like, what famine? What, Esau? Man, we're going to go right in this little van, his little Humvee, and take what we want. He's going to be shooting at us, bullets popping off, and we're going to laugh. Like, that little gun, you think it's going to do something? Go get your tank, man. That ain't doing nothing either, man. Matter of fact, I'm going to tear that up. Take what you got. And I'm about to go give to my people. So who, who's next? Uh, I, I hear another uh, Humvee coming. I'm about to go take them little rations, take their supplies. Man, we're going to be like taking their lunch money. When that house of David get built up, that spiritual power come into play. Hey, man, we're going to be like roaring lions among sheep. Like Esau going to be running from us like roaches. <laughs> like I just seen a brother fly up in the air <laughs> at supersonic speed. <laughs> and he just threw, he, he went through Fort Banks like nothing. And took all the food. You know, this is what you pouring to his ball. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Looking forward to that standard being lifted.
Because you see what Job 5 and 22 says. It said, the destruction of fame is thou shalt laugh. You know, we got that spiritual power. We're going to be laughing at these devils. Like, oh, you thought you was going to starve me out? Really? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Breaking their bones. <laughs> all easy. Running through them. Hey, having, just having fun with it, you know? But knowing that it comes responsibility, we, that's to save the hopeful elect. That's to provide the, the women and the children that have come back to Yabashashi with food. So they'll be able to eat. So I'm not really worried about what this devil got going or the fame and coming. We know the fame and is coming, but if we stay locked in on this truth, locked in with our faith, hey, Yahabashasha will provide. You know, and Lord willing, we're part of that hopeful elect. And you see my office, I'm trying to go for one of the 144,000. That's my goal, Yashrael. I want to be one of those. I want to be one of the ones that's establishing the, the kingdom and looking out for the nation. You know, I want to be a caretaker for the nation. I want to go out and establish your supplies and take care of you know, the women and children that came back to you shop. That's what I want to do. That's a good job. That's a great job. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. So I'm doing the work. And Lord willing, it transforms into me carrying out my desire and setting up the kingdom of Yahweh Shah. That's the job I want. That's the office I want. And that's something that's going to bring me a lot of joy. Because that's what I want to do. I want to establish our nation. I'm tired of living in this devil's kingdom. I don't like his kingdom. It, it's BS. It, it's, it's polluted. It, it's ran all wrong. We need new management. New rulership. And I want to be a part of that. So I'm doing the work. And warning the sheep. You know, warning you that famine is coming. This devil is about to take the food away. And put you in a, a compromised position. In order to make you bow down. I'm telling you. Don't bow down to this devil. We got help coming, Yasharala. We got power coming. Our military is coming. We got something so much greater than what this devil can provide. His stuff is low level. Everything this devil got is low level. It's, it's decrepit, man. What we got is going to be so much better than what this devil got. All we got to do is hang on and make it through this rough period. That's what we got to do. So we, we building up for that. And I'm trying to prepare you know, Yashrallah for that. Do the work. that He said, uh, warn my people from me and let you know Yahabashashah is about to, to test all our faith. He's about to put us in that, that fire of adversity. And he's going to test our faith by using the wicked people, which is Esau, Edom. They're, they're going to do it. So with that being said, I hope this has been edifying. Kwong, Yashrallah, and DTA, Ababa Ball. Shalom.